Welcome back friends. In this video, we are going to integrate Zipkin server with our microservice environment. What is use of Zipkin server? What is the purpose? What we will going to achieve by uh, integrating Zipkin server in our microservice system? What is Zipkin? So Zipkin is a distributed tracing system. Zipkin is a distributed tracing system. What it means? The client call any API, right? We have multiple uh, service running. Client call a particular API. That particular uh, yeah, microservice, that microservice call another microservice. That another microservice call one more microservice. This is the call will happen in the microservice environment i want to track those calls i want to track those calls i want to uh, see those call information in centralized place i want to see those call information in a centralized place for that purpose we can use zipkin server zipkin server is a distributed tracing server zipkin server is a distributed tracing system we can we can track all microservices calls in a centralized place that is the purpose of zipkin server okay zipkin server is not a log aggregator zipkin server is not a log aggregator that meaning whenever you call api gateway whenever you call some account service there is some log will print right some log that log content we cannot store the log content we cannot store only we can track the calls what what are the call happened at a particular time those call tracking we can maintain in the we can those call reports we can see in the zipkin server we cannot see the log content we have to understand the uh, difference this is not a log aggregator this is only a um, this is only for seeing the calls okay call tracer we can trace the calls that's it hmm? okay how it's happening how to implement how to integrate the zipkin server for that we need to add this to artifact already in the last class we have added this artifact spring cloud starter sleuth if you want to implement zipkin server in our microservice environment we need to add two more dependencies one is spring cloud sleuth zipkin this is a zipkin client artifact this client artifact provides some libraries through that library we can store we can we can store the zipkin data in the zipkin server that is the purpose of this particular artifact then uh, spring cloud starter bus am amqp this is a rabbit mq artifact if you want to store zipkin sorry if you want to store um, call tracing in the zipkin server we need to use rabbit mq server we need to use rabbit mq messaging system we have to install rabbit mq messaging system okay that is a mandatory one so we need this is for uh, zipkin client this is for zipkin client this is for rabbit mq both artif artifact we need to add then we need to install zipkin server in our local system we need to install zipkin server that part i will going to tell soon okay how to install zipkin server how to install rabbit mq okay that part i will going to tell uh, part of this video itself okay i have added this artifact all my modules i added in um, account service see here i added See the three differences added. Okay, then report service here also I have added. This for rabbit compute. This for zipkin client. This is for uh, Spring Cloud Sleuth. And I added in a um, account service report service. I as of now I added account service report service. Then API gateway. The three services I have added. Okay. that's it okay once we added that we need to uh, 
start the server. We don't have to any additional configuration. We don't have to any additional configuration. Please make sure that before uh, adding this artifact, please make sure you have installed a Zipkin server as well as a RabbitMQ. Okay. How to install Zipkin server? Go to open Zipkin, I think. Zipkin. Why open Zipkin? Open this link. Open Zipkin download or Zipkin download for Windows. Yeah, this is a correct link. Okay, just to type with Zipkin downloads, then click this link. You will be getting this page where you can download the Zipkin server. Zipkin server is just a jar file, Java jar file. That's it, nothing else. Okay, it's very easy to install. Um, see here, uh, this is a Java version. Click this latest release. Okay, go to your favorite location i'll going to create one folder zipkin save it yeah i have saved here uh, now next we need to install a rabbit mq right download rabbit mq rabbit mq also cakewalk installation it's a very easy if you want to install RabbitMQ, we need to install Erlang. Erlang is a dependency software we need to install. Okay. Um, see here, here you can see here uh, Windows uh, Chocolate, your installer. Click this. Let's check here. One minute. Install on Windows. I click this link. So you can see your downloadable version here. Okay, just to click that download it. Okay, once you um, say download Rabbit MQ, then it's installing on Windows. Go to here and uh, click this. Okay. Hmm? It's provide all the OS here. Installing an RPM based Linux. We can find it from here also, I think. Yeah, here is a here is a link. We can see binary build. Binary build not required for us. I think this is the best one. Click installer. See, you can you can see your downloadable even you can go from here also right huh? um, download rabbit mq uh, click this link click this link from here go to if, you, if you're choosing windows just uh, click this installer open new tab down, scroll down you can see that downloadable exe file also we can go with others mac os whatever uh, os you have according to that os you have to choose okay it's a very easy to install also the uh, the if you want to um, install rabbit mq it's needed erlang software okay Installation guide, uh, you can see. Uh, thank you. The, the pro Erlang, Erlang client, right? You have to select that. Or just you can type here Erlang, download Erlang. Download Erlang. Click this first result. 
you can see the multiple version click the latest version okay uh, where is downloads yeah here you can see otp24.0 windows 64 binary what, whatever you want whatever version you need just click it and download it okay this is a very very important first you install the erlang first you install the erlang software then install the rabbit mq okay both are a cakewalk it's a just um, next 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 we need to say that's it you can easily install once you install the rabbit mq in the task manager automatically it start it automatically start after installing we can see here rabbit mq rabbit mq is running okay okay once you are done with the rabbit mq installation go to command line go to command line of where you store the zip kin jar okay now i'm going to go i'm going that location okay this is a jar file just to run this jar file java fn jar zip kin before running this jar file you have to do one step one 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 thing you need to do you have to set up the set the rabbit uh, mq url default url okay this is the once you install rabbit mq the rabbit mq default url this is the one okay you have to set that in the environment variable set rabbit hyphen uri amqb colon local that's it you have to set this then you start this uh, zipkin server okay java hyphen java zipkin server okay now zipkin server is started this zipkin server now keep on listen your rabbit mq uh, server for any message if any messages come it will take the messages from the rabbit mq server and uh, store it to uh, zipkin in memory database zipkin uses an in memory database called h2 in memory database in the database it will store the all the traces all the log trees okay now we have uh, uh, Install the Zipkin server and install RabbitMQ. The Zipkin is up and running. Okay. Now there is a time to test. Before testing, we'll we'll see the flow. Okay. We have added uh, three artifacts, right? Um, these three artifacts we have added. So this first box, Spring Cloud Truth for this particular box. Okay, that is providing that uh, Spring Cloud Truth library, which provides a unique trace ID for each calls. Second one is a Zipkin client. This is the dependency for Zipkin client. What is the responsibility of this particular artifact? Whatever library provided by this particular artifact, it will extract the data from whatever call is happening in our microservice environment. That trace, that trace call. Uh, taken from Spring Cloud Sleuth framework and convert that data to Zipkin server understandable manner. Okay, it will convert. So I am calling two, three calls. That three, the two, three call information taken from the Zip, Zip, uh, Spring Cloud Sleuth and convert that data to Zipkin server understandable format. Then that data pushed to a Rabbit MQ server, pushed to a Rabbit MQ server by the Zipkin client. Once data pushed to Rabbit MQ server, Zipkin server keep on listening Rabbit MQ. Keep on listening Rabbit MQ. Any data arrives in Rabbit MQ immediately. Your Zipkin server take that data and store it to Zipkin server database. Store it to Zipkin server database. Those data we can easily view in the Zipkin UI. Easily view in the Zipkin UI. This is the demo we will go to see now. Okay. This all flow is happening by adding this three artifact we don't have to do any additional server uh, apart from adding this artifact you have to install zipkin server you have to install erlang software you have to install rabbit mq that's it okay okay now i'm going to check the um, calls okay first step i'm going to call the ap gateway directly i'm going to call AP gateway. Uh, what is the I 
I don't have any control for AP gateway. That's fine. Okay, no problem. Mm? Okay, I'm going to call the account service. Okay, I'm going to call the account service directly. Mm? This is the viewing the account service, right? To view all the customers from the account service. This is a direct call of account service. I'm not calling via AP gateway. I'm not calling via um, a report service. Okay. Let's call this. Local API gateway, so for API slash customers. Okay, now it's providing the customer data. Now we can see the see this call trace in our Zipkin server through uh, uh, Zipkin UI. Okay, what is the URL of to access Zipkin server? This is the URL. Okay. Copy, paste it. This is can UI. Just run the query. So this is an invalid call. I happened. I did right. I I have given API uh, slash customer in in a singular word. I have typed that the thing. I, that is a log trace. It's showing. This is a success call. Right. This is a success call. I call directly customer uh, service. It show all the information, start time, address, all the meta information to show. API customer, customer controller, get all customers. So this provide information of your call. It's a information of your call, particular endpoint information. What time is started? Which controller? What is the method? This will call meta information. Call meta information we can get through the zipkin server this is not a log aggregator this is a call tracer this is a call tracer that's it now next step is i want to call these customers via api gateway via this endpoint via api gateway for that what you have to do this is a api gateway uh, port number 8081 slash account iphone service slash api customers right okay the same result we will going to get now now i'm going to again run the query see here is a, there is another call from the api gateway so api gateway from the api gateway i'm calling account service exactly it's providing api gateway then account service i'm calling this is the full information of the particular call okay Okay, next I will going to call this endpoint through account service. Through API gateway, I will going to call, but I want to call this endpoint through report service. Report service. Okay, for that, 8081 report service slash API slash reports, right? Reports. For new you, uh, subscriber, new viewer, you don't know about this uh, endpoint and all. Okay, you have to watch the previous video. Then only you can understand this endpoint. This endpoint and all I have already uh, covered part of the previous videos. Okay, hmm? I'm calling this endpoint through API gateway via report service. Same endpoint. Again, I'll go on the check. Done query. Again, there is another call from API Gateway. Show all. Account service. Then show. Get all customer. I am calling report service. API reports customers. Let's check this. Yeah, yeah here, here you can see our expected uh, um, trace. See, now I call this uh, 
particular endpoint via API gateway using account server, using report service. It will call the API gateway, API gateway call the report service, report service call that uh, customer data using fine client, right? That is the call tracing here. See API gateway, report service, account service. See, this is the meta information about the particular call. This is the purpose of Zipkin server. Okay, we can centralize, we can keep on centralized place where we can see all the calls. That is the purpose of Zipkin server. Okay. But the configuration perspective very simple, right? I have not done anything. Just added only three. Uh, just added only three artifacts. By adding these three artifacts, everything happened automatically. That is because of our Spring Boot Auto Configuration feature. Spring Boot Auto Configuration feature. Okay. Uh, that's it, guys. I believe uh, people who watched all the videos about the microservice, you now you get some um, uh, good idea about the microservice technology in Spring Boot. From the next video onwards, we are going to implement how to test the Spring Boot application. Testing is a very, very uh, important part in the project development life cycle. How to write a proper test cases, how to write a powerful test cases in Spring Boot under microservice. That part we will going to see from next video session onwards. Okay, until then, bye bye from Furesh. Still not subscribe this channel, please subscribe it, share this video to your friend circle, Click bell icon for regular updates. Thanks for watching this full video.